scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Yes, I'm on my way to better days. No matter what I see around me now, I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. On my way. On my way. Hallelujah. So why faith? Hebrews chapter 11. It will be a long reading. It's an archive of men and women who demonstrated unto us the reality of faith. Let's read it. Please pay attention. We are studying the word of God tonight. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Verse 2. It says, For by it the elders obtain what? A good report. Next verse. Through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. Now watch this. The Bible starts we see certain formations happening. The Bible gives us a character of faith. Then we see certain people mentioned called elders. Are we together? Then we see a formation that faith is able to form realities. And then we see the word of God coming into the picture. Now, I want you to study how these realities begin to piece themselves. Faith, substance, evidence, report or results. Are we together? understanding the word of God. You see these things piecing up together. Then the Bible says, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Verse 4. Let's see how far we can go. Now, the first character in the Bible, the Bible calls them elders. Interestingly, the first elder in the Bible is called who? Not Adam. Not Cain. This is, this is a teaching on its own. I'm telling you, I like enjoying myself when I talk about these things. Believe you me, I plan to do the same this night. By faith, Abel did what? Offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice by faith than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. So by faith, a man offered unto God a what? More excellent sacrifice. Is it not interesting that the first thing God uses to describe faith is giving? 
We are going to lions. But the Bible talks of offering a more excellent sacrifice. It takes faith to be a giver. Cain gave, but he was a miser. And God said the reason why he mised was he did not have faith. Are we together? It was out of faith that Abel took sacrifice as though that was all he had and gave unto God. Meaning greed. Listen. Selfishness of all sorts is traceable to what? Lack of faith. That at any point in a man's life, he's a withholder and not a giver. I don't mean money. A giver of anything. It is because of fear of the continuity of the supply. And the Bible says it's lack of faith. Number two, five. By faith, the second elder we see in the Bible is who? Now, Enoch was the seventh man from creation, theologically speaking. Enoch was the seventh man from creation. And then from Abel, he just jumps to Enoch and says, by faith, Enoch was what? Translated. 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 Kabarato satire. By faith, a man can leave a level to another. By faith. I know this is talking of translation out of this realm, but you need to understand what this meant. Enoch translated from one territory to another by faith. Like a man can leave poverty to wealth. Like a man can leave sickness. It says if you want to experience translation, it will happen how? By faith. That he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had a testimony. Notice how pleasing God is tied to faith. It seems like God's obsession is not just praise and worship. God's obsession is that he can find men who have faith in him. Every time you see the manifestation of faith, you see God smiling. The Bible gives you a picture that he's happy. He's well pleased. Number three. And without faith, it is what? Impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe. That he is. The word is there means he exists. He exists. And then that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hear what the Bible says. For everyone that seeketh findeth. It's important we get this foundation. Seven. Let's see how far we'll go. By faith. Noah comes in now. Noah. Kalabakotaya. Be warned of God of things not seen as yet. When God was warning Noah, there was no evidence that those things were coming. The same way God is saying you will prosper and there is no evidence. But Noah moved in advance. He didn't wait to say, let me see a cloud first. He started building the ark when the sun was shining bright and Bible calls it fate. Now, I hope you... Those who did mathematics, everybody did mathematics. Whether you like it or not. I'm not asking you whether you passed. I'm saying you did it. Are we together? Now listen. A good teacher does not give two examples and set examples. No. When they give you, especially a difficult aspect of mathematics, they give you as many examples. And those examples have variations of the way the underlying principles are applied. Is that true? Uh -huh. It's supposed to help you familiarize you with the different ways. This is what the Bible is doing. We're working maths here. Are we together? So the Bible begins to give you different people. Do you know everything the Bible is saying about them is the same? He's only using different human examples to show you different applications. How men maneuvered circumstances by faith. So, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things, not seen as yet, moved with fear. The word fear there is reverence. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. 100 years it took Noah to build an ark. How many years have you waited for your miracle? Let me hear it, please. Six months. And you're already saying, Lord, if by November... A man moved by faith for 100 years. 
How long do you have to live on earth to spend 100 years building an ark? I'm sure the children, when they gave birth to their children, they said, we, we grew up seeing our grandfather. What exactly is this project? And Noah said, the rain will come. And the children said, well, I'm now a teenager. I, I believe the rain will come. And God kept watching and says it was by faith. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm going to break down faith for you to really understand. And then you will know that many people really do not believe in God. Many of you at the end of this teaching, you will tell God, I'm sorry. Because you will find out that you really should not receive a result. Amen. Next verse. By faith. Now Abraham comes in. I like the Bible. How many people now? Abel, help me. Enoch, uh-huh. Noah, Abraham. It says by faith, Abraham, when he was called out to go into a place, that means your destiny must be fulfilled by faith. God called a man. Are you seeing now? So we see by faith to do different things. Translation. Now we are seeing he's talking about destiny here. An inheritance. By faith. You are not the first person to graduate and wonder what to do with your life. There was a man in the awe of the Chaldeans. Awe of the Chaldeans called Abraham. And the Bible says when he was called to go out to a place which he should after receive an inheritance obeyed he says and he went out help me please that's the faith part of it not knowing whither he went go to lagos yes lord what are you doing in lagos obeying god you are stupid god what do you say you are a man of faith abraham don't turn there genesis 22 Genesis 12. Come out of your father's house and out of your kindred and out of all of these. Listen, to a land that I will show you. No name. The assignment is follow me. And the Bible says Abraham gathered his house and says, Gentlemen, we're off. Let's go. May you surround people in your life who can let you obey God. Yeah. There are times, let me just say this in advance. There are times certain people will love you too much to allow you obey God especially for we young people because our parents many of them even those who were not born again walked by faith are we together the last time their father saw them was from one they used to call it from one the next time the person came he came with the lady he would marry a master's holder how he survived the father did not know one heavy box and a blessing. Don't drink, don't follow women, be hard working. The God that kept me keep you. Enter a boat and go. And the father had confidence that the boy will not die. After eight years, he now came back and said, Daddy, God is faithful. I now have a house, a car. How did it happen? By faith. But now, you see someone of 30, they say, I think you should start settling. I say, hey, mommy, I will take it gently. Just buy me blanket, buy me sugar, buy me tea. Don't laugh. We have been so pampered that the system of faith is eroding our minds. So whenever we say faith, many people just laugh. That's the reason why there are very few people who really do much i'm not even talking ministry in the kingdom in our lives this over pampering are we together now auxiliary faith okay uncle i'll take the first step but make sure you are standing by look at what he told peter he said fear not jesus speaking it is i and peter said if it be thou bid me come jesus said come faith faith Let's read to verse 10. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of him, with him of the same promise. Uh -huh. For he looked for a city whose builder and maker is who? The Lord. Next verse. Through faith, 
the first woman now also an elder the first woman through faith Sarah herself received what so how do men receive strength in the kingdom you don't receive strength in the kingdom just by eating a good meal although that is important she received strength and conceived seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful now notice that among all these people the common denominator is that they did or said something are we together there was nobody whose testimony was just passive the bible tells us something they did something they said something they did something they said let me say this up front faith is not hearing what god has said faith is fulfilling your own path your own path Let's go to verse 17. I want to jump. Verse 17. Are we together? By faith, Abraham now, when he was tested, did what? Or tried. Offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac shall thy seed be called. Sacrifice by faith. Sacrifice by faith. Now the Bible talks of Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. Let's go to 23 and look at Moses. The Bible dwells for, I don't know why, but it seems to me like Moses was the person the Bible dwelt so much in. All of the people who the Bible talked about faith, even Abraham, who we call to be the father of faith, the Bible just spoke about him. But for Moses, the Bible seemed to dwell and talk a lot about Moses, which I found interesting. Let's read on. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was did what? was he three months of his parents because they saw that he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's command you understand the act of faith they put him in a basket and pushed him to the nile trusting god to take care of him next verse then by faith moses when he was come to years refused to be called what refused to be called by faith just like you refuse to be called um, any name that seems derogatory, any name that comes from a background that can destroy you. Oh, you are all the poor ones. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? He said by faith, seeing something, he refused. Choosing rather, think about this, to suffer affliction. Listen, there are certain kinds of afflictions that the Bible says you must go through them by faith. It's a choice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When a lady refuses to say yes to an unbeliever, and instead of marrying two years before that time now remains single because she refused to say yes to an unbeliever by faith waiting for a godly man she believes to be her husband the bible calls it to suffer affliction not every act of faith looks pleasant in the process in fact let me tell you something a major part of the journey of faith will make you look stupid because you are forfeiting we call it in economics opportunity cost you forgo something for the excellency of what is waiting for you than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for what a season 26 esteeming the reproach of christ 
greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward and so on and so forth and um, let me look for somewhere now I mean the Bible talks about him right well let's read let's read really let's read down to um, 30 where it goes to Joshua now we're reading down to 30 you see how much a lot was talked about Moses by faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seeing him who is invisible 28 we are reading down to 30 through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood lest he that destroyed the destroyer now the firstborn should touch them 29 this is the last of the talk about Moses by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land which the Egyptians are saying to do the Egyptians tried it but they didn't do it by faith so they died are you seeing now now let's talk of the wall of Jericho verse 30 by faith the walls of Jericho did what not by strength by faith we saw them going around walking around Jericho are you understanding the character of faith already every one of these people did something whoever tells you faith happens without your commitment lied to you I'm showing you all through the common denominator to all these things is that they believed God and there was a demand on their own part to respond by saying by doing by keeping their own part so their obedience upgraded the promises of God to a covenant the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days read 31 by faith ah, yeah, yeah, the second woman look at the name the Bible calls her now this is interesting why didn't he just say by faith Rahab I think we are smart enough to know then he says by faith Kalabakata a woman who was a harlot changed her story by faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believe not meaning she was part of them she was destined to perish please is that true what is the wages of sin help me what is the wages of sin that means there is a system in God where men can change prophecy there is a system in God where men can alter obvious consequences the key is faith if first tells you her credentials she was a harlot do you know what it means to earn a right to stay on a wall so that whoever is passing sees you before even seeing the king by faith she changed her report everyone died in Jericho except Rahab not only did she not die she forced herself into the genealogy of Jesus when she had received the spies with peace and what more can I say I really wonder what more do you need to hear you, you see I'm understanding what Paul is saying Paul is saying, if by now you don't see the synergy, what more can I say? He says, for time would do what? To fail me, to talk of others. There were other elders in the Bible. Let's name them. Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, and of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets. There were many. Next verse. Who did what? Through faith. Subdued kingdoms. Wrought righteousness. Uh -huh. Obtained promises. Stopped the mouth of lions. Next verse. Quench the violence of fire. Look at that. I wonder why Nigerian actors have never acted a film this powerful. Men who did this by faith. Produce a film and call it by faith exploits in the spirit they escaped the edge of the sword men who looked at death eyeball to eyeball 
and say you will not kill me and then the bible now says out of weakness were made what men who were born weak but refused that they will not die weak works valiant in fight turn to flight the armies of the aliens then listen to this women receive their dead raised back to life and then the bible quickly puts a very strange balance it says and others were tortured not accepting that means they did not die out of the power of death conquering them the bible says they rejected deliverance willingly they discovered in their knowledge of god that to die is gain and they said i can live but let me prove to god how much i trust him and they said it is within my power to command deliverance but i reject it faith it did say they died out of weakness please don't confuse this they died they had do you know there are many people today who died when we get to heaven they will tell you they were offered an opportunity to live but they saw something higher and they said let's go the bible calls it faith now you mourn them and try to look for hilarious stories but they are they have joined those elders it's a list it's a roll call there are many people shortlisting themselves there it says not accepting deliverance that they may do what obtain a better resurrection i'm going somewhere with all this and you will soon see next verse and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings you are not the first to be laughed at are we together yea moreover of bonds and of imprisonment imprisonment they were stoned and they were sown asunder now you don't like this koinonia is quiet but the bible tells you beforehand that these men had the power they were not helpless bible history makes it look like they were helpless the bible says they they had the power to command deliverance but they saw something higher and by faith they stood they were slain with the sword they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Of whom the world, there are such men that the world was not worthy of. They walked upon the earth. Have you been given something that you say is a privilege? There are men who they are walking upon the earth, is a blessing to the earth. The Bible says it's a privilege. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. 39. I want you to read 39 and the next verse, I believe, verse 40. Am I, am I right? Yes, 39 and 40. Read it with all your heart and your spirit. Ready? One to read. And these all, uh huh having obtained a good report through faith receive not what now read on next verse god having provided some better thing for us that they without us there is a dimension of the manifestation of faith that god is trusting our generation to reveal and the bible calls it the perfection of all these elders as great as their exploits are and were the bible says that god had provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect now theologically speaking there's been two schools of thoughts just explaining this scripture a lot of people mean this to be the dispensation of grace because you would notice that all the people who were communicated were largely old testament people are we together now and so the better promises that many people think uh they say that it is because these people suffered in the dispensation of the lord the old testament and now we have access to grace the substitutionary work of christ now that is true but i don't believe that is all are we together that is true but the death of christ in itself afforded us a higher platform to manifest faith 
Are we together? Mm. An example of such opportunities is the possibility to live by the faith of the Son of God. Now, this was a possibility they did not experience. But that a man can tap into a higher frequency of faith called the faith of the Son of God. Not just your faith, the faith of the Son of God. You can bring God's faith to an operation and get results. This is a better promise. But that's not what we are talking about. I'm showing you men who did strange things through faith. And so if you and I must make impact in our generation, it will have to be how? By faith, through faith, by faith, through faith. So how are you going to build that house? How are you going to change the story of your family? By faith. How are you going to get out of that sickness and infirmity? Please understand what I'm saying. There is the chronicles of ordinary men who dare to believe God and change a lot of things. So faith is, is, is important to please God. And we have a testament of men and women who walked by faith. The next thing I want us to look at Is the word of God let's look at the word of God being that this is the instrument that produces faith it is important for us to look at the character and I'll be very brief the character of the word of God write this down please the word of God whether spoken or written the word of God whether spoken or written contains the life of God the word of God whether whether spoken or written contains the life of God the word of God, whether written or spoken, contains the life of God. Number two, write it. The word of God is a representation of his commitment to man. The word of God is a representation. I want you to write this. We are looking at the character. A representation of his commitment to man. Like you have a covenant, like you have a contract between two people. So the testament of his commitment to man. Number three. The word of God represents his will for man. Now this is important. We are going to dwell a little here. The word of God represents his will. Comes from the Greek word logos. Where we get the word word. Logos the thoughts of a man the will of a man the intention of a man so the word of God represents his intention his will his will it's a legal term his will for man number four the word of God is the basis the basis for contact with man the word of God is the basis for contact with man. I'm giving you certain characters of the word of God as far as the manifestation of faith is concerned. The word of God is the basis for contact with man. That means that the Holy Spirit remains helpless until the word of God creates the platform for contact with man. Number five, the word of God is the only instrument capable of moving God to action. The word of God is the only instrument capable of moving God to action. God is moved to the feelings of our infirmities but not to action. The word of God 
is the only instrument capable of moving God to action. Write this down. The word of God contains instructions, prophecies, promises. The word of God contains instructions, prophecies, promises. Also contains principles. Are we getting blessed? Now please look up everyone. Please look up. Now there's been a lot of argument in the body of Christ as to whether this should be called the word of God. The word Bible comes from the word Biblios and that just means a book. Nothing special really. It just means a book. Are we together? Now theologically speaking for many years in the church age they did not have a compendium of 66 books like this. There are other schools of thought that argue how that there are many chapters and verses that are missing in the Bible. There are many chapters and verses that were added that should not have been in the Bible. Are we together now? And how that there are other books of the Bible. Like there are arguments about the apocryphal books, the apocrypha, the Roman Catholics use that a lot. And then there are other books, the books of Jasha. There are other books called the Annals of the Kings. There is the book of Enoch. Are we together now? Now all these books together have been argued by theologians. Some of them believe that it should be contained since the character of scripture is that all scripture was inspired of God. Are we together? And that anything that is of God should give spirit and life. So I'm, I'm just giving you an educational background on this so that you will understand. So there has been a lot of argument. In fact, currently, um, I know that there was a time certain, uh, I think a Rab Rabonical Association also came up with certain things and they felt that a lot should be edited in scripture. Now the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. Say Hebrew. And the uh, the New Testament was written largely in Greek and Aramaic. Are we together? Now, these people wrote these scriptures, but they were not in charge of its translation. There's no point to give you the whole story of Bible history, how that this translation were in bits and pieces. Some of these pages were missing for many years, and then they were found together with what we call the Dead Sea Scrolls. And then it was at the time of King James, King James. He was a real king, ancient king called King James. Not ancient like modern history now, King James, who authorized the publication of a compendium of these 66 books that we call the Bible. Are, are we together now? So all the 66 books, Old and New Testament together are called. Now, I'm not, the point of all of this is not to create a debate about other extra biblical texts or some exaggerations that were done here that's not the idea one thing we know for sure is this listen every man who contributed in the writing of this was imperfect as a person that means if god allowed them to still rob their imperfection it means the mystery is not in the letters are you getting what i'm saying now please you must understand what i'm teaching you we're examining faith Elijah was a temperous man. The Bible is a compendium of many things. Demons spoke in this Bible. Is that true? Donkeys spoke in this Bible. Are we together? Men spoke in this Bible. People lied in this Bible. People used divination in this Bible. So the fact that it is written here does not automatically mean it is of God. You have to get this. So when the Bible or when we talk about the word of God, we are not talking about just the opening of anything because you see we must balance this there are believers who say if you can show me in the bible i will do it that means you are going to get into error the, the bible is a prophetic book you can make it preach anything you want there are herbalists today when you enter their shrine you see other books and you see a very clean bible there are we together and they will read the scripture and instruct you based on that scripture and because it is in the bible you will believe i should walk no so i want us to examine what the word of god is listen to my message uh i think the living logos 
I had done a teaching years ago on that. What exactly is the word of God? Because none of the apostles in the early church, in fact, even up till um, Emperor, Emperor Nero, Constantine, and all of these people, they never had the opportunity to hold the Bible like this. It was a taboo. They were kept in temples. Are we together? And then, of course, when the people of God were caught in different kinds of captivities, they were hidden and taken from place to place to arrive like this as a compendium. A lot happened to them. Are we together? But the Bible says, let the word of Christ, Colossians 3 verse 16, dwell in you richly. So I want to ask you a question. How did the disciples grow in the word? When Jesus resurrected, I want you to go back to the book of Acts. When an average believer got up in the morning, what did he study? And how did he study? Are we together? You would only go to the temple. We do it in the Anglican. For those of us who are inclined Anglican and maybe Presbyterians to do this, they have what we call first reading and second reading. Is that true? Where you come up, you read, this is the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. And then, you know, that continues and then there are parts uh, where you recite you know the the apostles creed and so on and so forth like that now other pentecostal circles do not have the privilege of having that kind of thing you just come you preach and then you end this was how it was in jewish temples the priest one of the all of those people would come up and give you one of the scrolls they had messages for every time so you would read it and roll it back and, and keep it and then they could preach from it they could speak for it and, and so on and so forth now if you don't understand this that I'm teaching three things will happen to you number one you can fall into the error of absorbing the letters blindly and believing that you are growing in the word because you are consuming these letters that's the first error or number two you can just say since this is not the word of God let me throw it away and destroy your spiritual life there are people today now you know i was talking with a few people and they were talking to me and said look the use of ipad and, and now please i don't have if you are using devices here that's the, the the goal is not to to um um discredit you on all of that we're in the 21st century but I think a, a group of gentlemen were talking to me and I said, Apostle, what is your take on the use of iPad? As far as the revelation of the word of God we have is concerned. Because, because our concept of scripture is that I'm holding a book. A man of God even said in Revelations, God told John, write, not type. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, see, personally, I honestly, I honestly believe. See, there's something about holding this thing. <laughs> there is a chemistry between the letters of this book and your eyes. I, I absolutely believe that. But I don't have a problem. I mean, I have all kinds of things. We use it on our devices, phones, laptops, and, and whatever you have. What is the word of God? Write this down. Let's define what the word of God is. Since this is the instrument for producing faith, write this down. The word of God is any communication. The word of God is any communication or any platform. Any communication or any platform where the voice of God, the ways of God, write it down, where the voice of God, the ways of God, and the life of God can be accessed. The word of God is any communication or any platform where the voice of God, please listen, the ways of God and what? The life of God can be. That means what I am speaking to you now. If it contains the voice of God. 
if it contains listen the ways that is the principles of god and if it is capable of releasing the life of god what is this called the word of god meaning as i'm speaking to you now what i am saying is worthy of being written here the only thing is that i was not part of those who were specifically you know brought together to make the 66 books god's idea is not for us to be limited by 66 books god's idea is that our lives become a continuation of the books that are written here are, are we together so god's ultimate goal is not for you to be sound in scripture but that you become it an expression that's why the bible says we are living epistles say living epistles so that look at how it is if you read something like verily verily i say unto you the words that i speak listen they are spirit and they are life are we together god's idea is not just for me to read it but become that scripture so that whoever does not have an opportunity and left his bible at home can also read it in me are you getting the point so imagine every believer like a page in the scripture releasing certain possibilities men were not supposed to know god just by reading the bible they were supposed to know god by interacting with the church so that way before anybody opens this book he should open the book and say oh so this is an explanation so this attitude is called kindness are you getting what i'm saying ah uh, some of you are lost let's come again i want to deliver you from religion listen 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 the power is not just in cramming scriptures the power is in the words that are written here that the holy spirit can use this word to forge something upon your spirit so that you become an expression of it not just a talker of it and that's where we destroy ourselves the word of god is not greek the word of god is not hebrew listen the word of god is not english the word of god is any platform for accessing him listen if there is a way i can make this become the voice of god and a platform to speak a particular scripture within the period of that miracle this is the word of god how do i teach this now help me holy spirit if i prophesy to you and i say hey, Jimmy, may the lord bless you and it happens do you know what why it happened because what i have spoken is the word of god it was a platform where the life of god could flow to him if i use oil to lay on your head the oil works because the word of god is on it so the word of god is not the right things about god the right things about god how many of you know granite now this bible is like the granite the real granite do you just eat the thing like that you open it but you cannot access what is inside until you come to it are you getting what i'm saying see brothers and sisters that is why many people read this but they cannot get faith i'm going to show you something how faith comes but we must understand the character and the word of god i read a lot i study the bible but i have the consciousness that i am an expression of the word of god are we together now so when you come to me i don't run and open the bible and say this verse is this verse that uh -uh. that i left my bible at home does not mean the word of god is at home the word of god is living and active it's your bible i'm, I'm teaching you your bible see i'm showing you why we don't get results i can hold this against a witch and put it under my bed and snore myself into a terrible drip 
are we together i may think that because this was under my pillow it does not have any power in itself the power is released listen when this is studied by faith by faith means that you believe that although these are letters the spirit of god can breathe upon this this is what logos you see the word logos and rema that people are speaking rema is not just the revealed word rema is when the breath of the spirit comes upon this letter it's like the breaking of the ground not seed and all of a sudden you can receive it so you don't need to recite the scripture you only need to have the life thereof the recitation of the scripture is to add to your excellence in communication and to strengthen your conviction it is not the recitation in my name they shall cast out devils Jesus did not say if you stand before people the name he said is not Jesus we mentioned Jesus so that they will know that the office we are acting upon is the Christ the name is not Jesus the name is Lord and Lord is a revelation it means absolute master sovereign controller so I look at a spirit I'm not speaking but I'm casting him in the name of Jesus the name of Jesus is not a recitation in the name of J-E-S-U-S -S, be healed no the name of Jesus is an office So whether I am talking or not is still the name of Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Jesus meets somebody, a madman in Gadara. The demons beg him and beg him and say, don't cast out. What did he say? Go. Now that word go, you say it and it may not work. Because the go is not just G-O. The go was simply an, a voice activated communicator of the word of God. Whatever he said, even if he said come, they still would have gone. It's not, it's not like they needed intelligent English because they, they spoke good English. The demons say we understand. No. Please don't be excited for nothing. I really want you to get this thing. Are we together? The word of God is not just about your voice. The word of God is about an understanding that makes you become a platform for his life. So as I am walking now, I'm giving the word of God expression. If I happen to open my mouth and speak to you, I have given the word of God more expression. That is the reason why a donkey could still communicate the word of God. That is why handkerchiefs and aprons, they were taken. Could the handkerchief speak? They could not speak, but they were going by the word of God. Jesus sent men in his name. They were not born again, yet they returned with results. They said the demons were subject to us through thy name. Hallelujah. Why do we study the Bible? Write this quickly. We study the Bible for three major reasons. Number one, we study the Bible because contained in the Word of God, contained in the Bible as we know. Now I can call it interchangeably the Word of God, you understand. The Bible contains the most accurate dealing of God with man. The Bible contains the most accurate dealing of God with man. We study it because it's the most accurate historical compendium of God's dealing with man. There are many history books, but the Bible gives us the most accurate compendium, historically speaking, of God's dealings with man. Number two, the Bible contains principles, promises, prophecies from God to man. The Bible contains principles, promises, prophecies from God to man. So we study so that we can have an understanding of these things. Number three. We 
we study the bible because it is the only book we study the bible because it is the only book that can authorize the holy spirit to make manifest what is written therein we study the bible because it is the only book that can authorize the spirit of god or the holy spirit to make manifest the things that are written therein no other spirit is legally authorized to manifest everything written here now it does not mean other spirits cannot manifest what is written here but only the holy ghost is authorized to back up to make manifest meaning listen listen meaning if i read the bible and i see by his stripes i am healed now listen when the word of god contained is released in my spirit because of this book is giving me access to that word of god now the holy spirit is authorized to make real that which i have believed from the book are you getting what i'm saying now a time is going to come maybe not in this current church age but a time is going to come we are not going to read this again i hope you know <laughs> yeah a time will come we will not read this but we'll continue growing in the word a time is going to come we will not read this again it's not heresy it will not be in this dispensation the book of revelation ends with the beginning of a new dispensation we do not yet know what will happen therein the same way before our time it was only from acts chapter one you know when the church was born and now our dispensation has had the privilege of access to read this are we together other saints believers still in our dispensation did not read this yet the word of god was mighty in them for instance apollos the bible says he was even mighty in scripture this is where we miss it we read the letters and ben Hadad, the king of syria gathered all the hosts together gather me oh god gather me gather me oh god you see now listen listen that looks very sincere but the word of god is not on that statement i'm being careful so you don't feel offended but it's the truth i want to teach you how faith works do you know for many years i really didn't understand how faith worked until one time i i took out i studied almost 11 people those who represented men of faith from bishop oyedeko to kenneth copeland and his wife to dr frederick casey price to all of the men hallmarks of faith ew kenyon i sat down with these people and i started seeing it i said so this is where we're missing it we recite scriptures and believe that the recitation is where the power is released no sir are we together am i discrediting the reading of the word of god of course not of course not you can see how old this bible is it was not like that something made it so it's called diligence diligence until the bible you you see it i don't know how many times i've laminated this bible again and again I've read it to a point that the pages, I can close my eyes. You say, Matthew, okay, I mean, Isaiah, I wanted to try, you know, I can literally open any page everywhere is marked up and down. So I believe it. But I found out that many of us keep accumulating this. And then we wonder why things are not working for us. The word of God is the spirit and the life of God. The spirit and the life of God. The spirit and the life of God. Whether released by the reading of these letters or communicated through the speaking of the Holy Spirit. Faith comes. Now let's discuss faith. We're back to faith. Romans 10, 19. Romans 10, 17. Is God helping us tonight? I'm working this thing with us because I want us to understand faith. We are going to pray. Romans 10, 19. Read it please. 10, 17. One, two, read. 
Aha. Uh -huh. Now, the word hearing, let me correct two things. The word hearing, the first hearing, is a very broad word. It does not just mean faith comes by using your ears. Are we together? The word hearing is a very broad word. And there are many synonyms you can add to it. Number one is perception. 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 Faith comes by perceiving. Not just hearing with the ear alone like speaking to you physically. Faith comes by perception because when you read your Bible, you don't hear anything. Correct? You don't hear what you read like this. You can hear through your ears. And remember, even about hearing, the Bible says, he that has an ear. Meaning not everybody has this kind of ear. Are we together? So, the first hearing there means perception. Any platform that can create perception. It's not just limited to hearing. And then the second hearing there means understanding or comprehension. I want you to correct that. Not necessarily in your Bible. I'm not saying it's wrong. So faith comes by perceiving and understanding and that by the word of God. That's how faith comes. When you just read it and it says hearing and hearing, there is a dimension of application. It means listening again and again and that can help. But the accurate picture is perception and understanding. Everybody say perception. Say understanding. The second hearing there is understanding understandest what thou readest on that was where the problem was the utopian enoch he was not reading he was reading but understandest what thou readest perception so when i'm studying the word of god the bible now and i'm reading it the moment perception can come out of it the word of god has come into my spirit i don't have to hear now when i'm listening to bible on tape or hearing a preacher teach like this and the word of god comes it is still hearing so when we say hearing i don't just mean your ears your ears your eyes your dreams your visions any platform that can create perception can impart faith mm. listen listen there are people who have had dreams and got up from those dreams are we together and took certain actions those dreams brought solid conviction to their lives i shared with you about the encounter that i had with jesus christ now that encounter is not written in the bible that joshua Selman will have an encounter but in that encounter i told you jesus did not speak to me he never opened his mouth to speak yet he spoke so many things i left that encounter full of faith and stephen full of faith where did he read anything that we see faith there Do not limit your Bible study to just hearing and reading. Any platform that creates the perception of the word can release faith. So the first is perception. The most common platform of perception is hearing your ears. Because you hear sounds. Sounds. So as I'm speaking to you now, if you cover your ears, it's difficult for you to read my lips. Do you know why I'm speaking this to you? How do the blind deaf and dumb receive faith how do the blind deaf and dumb receive faith if someone is blind if someone is deaf if someone is dumb are you saying faith cannot come to him are we together you see people go to crusade grounds completely deaf Meaning as a man of God is preaching, other people are jumping. They themselves are not even following. Yet at the end, they are healed. And we are going to be finding out later that their faith healed them. So how did it come? Question two. A dead man who cannot breathe, cannot talk, cannot do anything. How does he come back to life? What is the principle of resurrection? And then, how did the bones of Elijah, not breathing, still transfer the anointing to somebody? Everybody say the word of God. That thing you call the bones of Elijah was the word of God. Any platform 
that can release the life of God. Thank you, Jesus. Say after me, the word of God is not limited to my hearing. Thank you. The word of God is not limited to my hearing alone. The word of God can come into my spirit through any mechanism that can create perception and understanding. Are you getting what I'm saying? Meaning the word of God can come to you through a Christian music. Now you are listening to a song. Play something. Play what you are playing. Watch this. Listen. If this guy is anointed. Hallelujah. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. Thank you. Look at what this guy is playing. Play it. Are you hearing any words? English. Is there Hebrew? Is there your language? I want to follow me carefully. Are we together? Now, but you see the anointing that is released from this. I can put the word of God on this sound now and you will see miracles happening. Are you getting it now? <laughs> I can put it by saying. Then this now, the sound that leaves this keyboard does not become an ordinary sound. It becomes the word of God. Why? A platform that can release the life of God. The power of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? You will hear it. And somebody now will come under the anointing. And you are wondering the operation of the word of God. This is ordinary keyboard. That's how you can be listening to worship in your room. And faith is rising. You are not exactly reading any scripture per se. Yet faith is rising. Because through it the word of God is coming. Are you getting what I'm saying? The word of God. The word of God is at work in me. The presence of the Holy Spirit in my life. Is a sign that I was born of the word. If you are not born of the word. He cannot come. Because he comes in response to the word. So I am born of the word of God. New life is in me. So the Holy Spirit is comfortable to live in me. Are we together? And every time that spirit and life is in me, he can release what is being said. Now I can speak it to happen, but I don't have to speak it alone to happen. I just need to create a platform for it to happen. Look, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, if you believe this, you will know why we pray for the sick. Not necessarily having to say, be healed. You just touch them. And you're saying, sir, you see some, somebody who tried to say, here, this is where the pain is. And you are touching his head. How does touching the head heal pain at the back? Is the word of God. You are only placing the word of God on them. So you have become an expression of the word. The word became flesh. That's what you have now become. So you are not only reading scripture. You are the word becoming flesh. The word becoming flesh. When you play keyboard, you transfer the word of God to it. This is what is called the ministration of life. The ministration of life. You are transferring life. You are transferring life to that word. Are, are we together now? So, when you put the word of God upon this now, deliverance begins to happen. Healings begin to happen. A sinner can sit down. That's why people come for concerts. And at the end of it, you make an altar call and they come out. You didn't teach John 3 16 but the word of God convicted them because it came from the music I want you to understand faith I really want you to understand faith this may look complicated but as we continue you will see how it ties up it will make your life powerful I don't move around hoping that demons will respond to my quoting of scripture I know a lot of scripture to the glory of God but I am a life-giving spirit I am a life-giving spirit. My body has become a communicator of the word of God. The spirit and the life of God. So if I shake you, for instance, shake me, Femi. If I shake you, I release the life and the power of God. Are you seeing that? If I shake you, 
I release the life and the power of God. You may be sick, I may not know. But as soon as I leave you, you find out I've been healed. Now, I did not ask you whether you are sick. The word of God saw a need. And because I have become the word of God, it feels it immediately. Are we together? Say I'm a manifestation of the word of God. Please, I want you to say it. I am a manifestation of the word of God. Say this, my goal for studying scripture, my goal for studying scripture is not just to be learned, but to be an expression of the word of God. My goal for studying scripture is not just to have head knowledge. It's not just to be learned, but to be a walking Bible. So when men look at your life, they can read a scripture immediately through your life. Living epistles. We fool ourselves in the body of Christ that because we have finished the Bible cover to cover, and by God's grace I've done this many times, so we say, I've read the Bible cover to cover. If I'm a man of God, as I'm speaking, the Bible says, blah, blah, blah. And, and once they are talking, these spirits are saying, my God, these guys don't even know what the word of God is. We fool ourselves and at the end of it, nothing happens. Are we together? And then somebody comes with a saxophone or a guitar and starts playing. Anywhere you see the manifestation of the power of God, the word of God must have preceded it. Because the Holy Spirit is not authorized to manifest when the word of God has not gone ahead. So when you see the word of God moving, when you see the Holy Spirit moving, he's confirming the word. Confirming the word. Whether spoken or revealed. The manifestation of the word of God. The manifestation of the word of God I tell you as I as I speak this thing you see sometimes because we are talking about the word of God and we are dividing it accurately to open up these things the Spirit of God let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit the moment you begin to communicate the word of God very accurately it's like his body is itching him he wants to move he wants to confirm it I'm telling you how to confirm the word it's not Holy Spirit move move that's not it let the word of God be communicated accurately and it's like it's like he cannot I'm not talking of just shaking under the anointing I'm talking of signs and wonders and miracles you place the word of God upon everything the word of God is on the air the word of God is on your chair everything that can communicate the word of God that's what makes the anointing when the word of God saturates a place, the Holy Spirit follows everywhere the word goes. The Holy Spirit follows everywhere the word goes. If the word goes to your kidney, he's following it there. If the word goes to your academics, he's following it there. If the word goes to your business, you don't get the Holy Spirit to move outside the word of God. It's witchcraft. So send the word of God and the Holy Spirit follows the word. Are we together? You send the word of God and the spirit moves in that direction. So if I declare that I prophesy to your finances, if the Holy Spirit does not back that, then it was not the word of God. Even if I quote scripture, are we together? So the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is proof that the word of God has been released in a place. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit is proof that his word has been released we pride ourselves with theological knowledge we pride ourselves with knowledge of scriptures john chapter 3 verse 16 for god so loved the world but it's not the word of god so the holy spirit cannot back it please hear what i'm teaching you the holy spirit only comes to the scene when the word of god is released whether through speaking or through any platform including your body being a manifestation so when you want to see the energy of the spirit released then be sure that what you are speaking or doing is the word of God are you getting what I'm saying now mm. if it's not the word of God you are not going to get the Holy Spirit there please hear me the degree to which we have seen the miraculous is the extent to which the word of God has come out 
so you can speak 100 words only 20 of them are the word of god the holy spirit backs only 20 percent of your communication are you getting what i'm saying this is the difference between what we call anointed people they may not have all the verses but their bodies have become greater platforms to release the word of god so the holy spirit in answer to the word confirms them are we together I'm a carrier of the word of God not just by cramming scriptures I have read it but the word of God flows through me like water the spirit and the life of God I understand the principles as I walk in the consciousness of that principle and with the understanding every time I utter my word or respond in any direction as the Holy Spirit would direct that's what we call faith I will tell you what faith is now faith is your response to and from the word of God not just scriptures your response to the word of God so you have to make it be sure that what you are responding to is not just scripture but the word of God and it is called faith and that faith will bring performance more on that next week I'm not talking so much about I need you to understand the word of God so that when we begin to teach on the dynamics the operation of faith you will know why certain things are not happening in our lives our idea of faith largely has been correct assimilation of scripture correct recitation of the same and then expectation in hope that something will happen it will never work that way are we together John 3 16 for this and that and that and that happened for we know the grace of our Lord that though he was poor yet he became rich so that we through his poverty might be, and we wrap it and we say Lord this is your word respond and say no it is true that I spoke that through the servants but you are only speaking scripture theologically listen let me tell you if the word of God was just scripture then the scribes should be have been the greatest carriers of the word they knew the entire Pentateuch of heart and Jesus looked at them and said ye are not knowing the scripture he said you search the scripture for a thing in them you will find life and you will not come to me listen if Jesus appears here and somebody is writing a book the Bible says scripture testified of him is that true scripture listen if you are writing a book about me and I show up who is a more authentic medium are you getting what I'm saying now so the scribes had head knowledge that prophesied about Jesus when Jesus came they said no Jesus we don't want you but we want the scrolls and he said you are hypocrites you read the scrolls they talk about me now you're reading I am here as the word become flesh you are rejecting me yet you are doing Bible study and Jesus said you are hypocrites are we together but a woman just ran and said thou I mean blind but if I may but touch the hem of who the word of God she perceived she didn't read anywhere but she saw men looking and she said I have heard and something has happened in my spirit I perceive and I understand that this man has power to heal there is nowhere in scripture where she read that you should take a step of faith she created an action based on her perception God honored that action and she was healed I'll teach you that next week don't take action until you perceive and understand the word you will be wasting your time so we take many steps do you know people can come and stand here with their tight frowning no perception no discernment no understanding all these men of God am I sure a Jimmy's tie I'm looking at this tie I hope it's not my money that is going to buy another tie and you are there grumbling and arguing and you drop that and the Bible says whatever is not of faith is sin now, men of God will not tell you that because they need the money so they'll say no problem unbelief or not that's your business just drop it let's use it but I'm telling you the sincere truth it must be by faith so here's what the Bible says Hebrews 11 verse 6 Hebrews 11 verse 6 give it to us please goodness Hebrews 11 verse 6 Hebrews 11 verse 6 I want us to read it now you will understand all that I've taught you 
there is a protocol to faith ready one to read <laughs> but without faith it is impossible to please him full stop whoever wants to be a man of faith what is the first step it says for he that comes to God must believe not his word leave the issue of manifestation you must believe that he exists it your perception must on you must understand the person you are dealing with the integrity of his person and his ability to provide for you number one then number two that he's a rewarder that he's a rewarder there are two things god wants to be known for to release faith one that he exists his existence means a lot because if he exists then he's mighty if he exists then he can hear my god's not dead he's surely alive he's living on the inside roaring like a lion there's a song like that have you read have you listened to that song do you believe god is alive i know you will say yes your life does not show it are we together because if you believe it will compel you to take action look at me listen do you believe there is water on this table do you believe do you believe now you can come and carry it do you believe there is water on this table yes you will not come and carry it because you consider it to be a waste of time so do you believe there is god yes so you can relate to him this is why people do not pray they don't believe god is alive let me tell you the truth the revelation behind the life of prayer is not religious struggles it's not an attempt to compete with people i pray for eight hours you pray for six hours all that is junk prayer is predicated upon an understanding that unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come after the service people are going to be waiting here queuing right to the back because you believe i'm not going what if i just i use style and just run out if i do that for three weeks you will stop standing here because it's a sign that you doubt my ability the first doubt of believers is not even in the power of god to produce that result it's even his existence i know you think this thing i'm telling you is powerful the word of god is guiding us here do you believe God exists? It's a very big deal. I've given my life to him. No problem. Do you believe he exists? He's alive. He's alive. Sing it. He's alive forever. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Jesus is alive forever. He's alive. Amen. Do you know why every time you visit a herbalist, you must live with a charm? You don't visit whether that charm is a goat or is something you must live with. We call them tokens tokens are representations of the existence of something are we together so you go to him i must marry that man put him in a bottle for me and then they carry his picture throw it in a bottle and lock it correct and give you say hide it somewhere for as long let me tell you the devil does not need that bottle he needs your faith and since your faith must be tied on something he gave you a bottle. Let me tell you why it still works. Even if you are born again. You are born again because although you are born again. You truly still, you have tasted of the power of that charm. Something in you still tells you it's working. So it continues working. The day a higher revelation and a higher anointing contents, it stops working a man of God one time was hungry and was passing and he saw a chicken that they had slaughtered for sacrifice he carried the chicken and roasted it and ate do you know why he never believed that that thing can do anything to him he said they shall take up poison who the believers believers in God 
not in miracles you believe in miracles but do you believe in god we're talking about knowing that god exists you know joshua selman exists but do you believe he exists let me tell you something you are a hypocrite if you claim to believe what is written here and don't believe the one who wrote it are we together oh i believe all things are mine do you believe the god who said it lord i don't believe in you but i believe in what you said does that make sense you don't believe in me but you believe in what i said no me and what i have said are one my word is my bond my word represents me when i'm not there you can take my word to represent me if i listen sam if you are dedicating an album and i stand before koinonia listen to me and i say joshua selman on behalf of myself i give you one million naira what is that that's my word now during if you go somewhere and you are doing your calculations you will calculate and say one million naira is coming from apostle have i given you the one million but you know me you believe in me it's up to you now to believe i can deliver it let me tell you what you do you first size me and look at me can apostle really bring out one million naira are we together so when you ascertain that i'm able to do it number two am i willing when you ascertain that you say i believe it so when god says i will bless you your own belief sizes him and says no god you are great but this triplet you are talking about don't don't joke with us so the cure is not just action the action part is hard we're coming to that but if you act upon something you don't believe is a waste if you believe in something and don't act it's also a waste are you seeing how we are cleaning it up but we're starting tonight with the understanding of god his word his integrity say i believe in god shout it i believe in god i believe he is alive i believe he exists that's why i love the apostles creed the anglicans recite it all the time right i love it so much because it's an encapsulation it's called it's, it's like a statement of faith sometimes you need to recite what you really believe i believe my business can rise I believe my life can do this i believe my wife can get pregnant that's wonderful but do you believe in god there is no guarantee in scripture that if you believe those things they will happen he that believeth on me john 12 14 please give it to us we'll find somewhere and pray now john 12 14 john 12 14 the son of the living god himself speaking john 12 14 john 14 12 John 14 12 John 14 12 thank you read it please everyone one to read stop it is important who you believe not just that you believe who you believe Jesus never said if you believe on things you believe that things that will happen they will happen he says verily verily i say unto you he that believe on what on me i want your faith to be directed to me not my works not my works i believe all things are possible but the reason why i believe all things are possible is because of him that can make them possible the end of your faith should be tied to a person and his integrity not the things he can do restful confidence he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also and what greater works than this shall he do because I go unto my father do you believe in him do you believe he exists sister listen to me you it's impossible to believe that fibroid will leave you until you believe in who the healer is are you getting what I'm saying man of god i believe my ministry will be great you are joking you are just playing games but i know whom i have believed and so i am persuaded in his ability that he is able the first thing is to believe the person then i am persuaded 
we leave the person and we believe in the ability and the things that will happen and we never get results he say is i see this happen all the time innocent people not taking out time do you know this is why intimacy is important with god intimacy does not help you believe things intimacy gives you an encounter an encounter furnishes the reality of god in you so that whatever he says is as good as him so you can believe jesus son of god i believe in you I believe in you. We call you a Messiah, Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. I believe in you. See you one more time from your heart. Yeah. When I lock up myself, I carry my Bible. I set an atmosphere that brings an intense presence of God. And when I lie down and open my Bible, number one, I am not reading for preaching. MOG, I'm not reading for preaching. I'm not reading for recitation. John chapter 1, verse 5, in this and that and that. And, and we no, 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 no. I'm looking at it. Jesus said, If you believe in me, and I sit down there. Holy Ghost, help me believe this truth. Jesus said, his presence is there. Jesus said, and in my mind, I'm looking at people gathered for miracle service. They don't know me. Maybe they are discussing among themselves, where is the man? And the man is there walking on his faith. Lord, I know you are able. I don't know what I'm going to see here, but I believe in you. There is no assurance anywhere physically, but I believe in you. And when I step and come right here and sit down, the moment the worship team finishes, do you know what I tell the Holy Spirit every time? I say, let's go. It's time to go and do this. As I climb this stage, I'm an ordinary man, but not alone. He's standing by my side. And so I can speak and make every audacious statement. And because of what is coming, listen, let me tell you, I believe in Jesus. I really believe in him. When he tells me something, I don't doubt. You will always doubt God till you encounter him. It's not the issue of I'm trying. Now, let me tell you, watch this. The body of Christ has fabricated a formula that if not careful, it will be our carnal attempt to recite and to 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 um, replace encounters is the concept a false concept of recitation of scriptures listen what we call confession comes from the word homologio meaning speak that which has been said i believe that there is a step to that but let me tell you what many people do we think that we just get up and start speaking I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed in the name of Jesus. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. I won't hear anything. I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And you said, I said it hundred times. Listen, I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. I hope you understand. I'm just trying to correct us because we will soon get frustrated with all those things. I'm blessed, I'm blessed in the name of Jesus. I'm talking to my mind. No, listen, your mind was designed to submit. Your mind is not that rebellious. It was designed to submit. You have not created the condition for it to submit. The Bible says, casting down every yetzah, every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. Your mind can submit. The mistake that we make is that we don't take our time to meditate. Lord, this shall not happen. In the name of Jesus, it can't happen. But it's happening. It can't happen. In the name of Jesus, it can't happen. It can't happen. Me, God forbid, I must carry my child. I'm carrying my miracle baby. Now, that is good. I don't have a problem with that confession. But what is the revelation behind it? What is the revelation that sponsors that thing? What you are speaking is not the word of God. What you are speaking is emotion. What you are speaking is fear. I can guarantee you most of what we do is a reaction to fear. It's just a spiritual reaction to fear or a spiritualized reaction to fear. Because, listen, if you are speaking right now and they tell you, 
your registration date is closing now for whatever maybe a job you need hundred thousand lord in the name of jesus i call forth help us they are coming hey they are coming oh, oh god they are coming watch this watch this watch this let me show you that it's not just faith it's fear they were praying for the apostles to be released from prison in the book of acts they were praying and asking that god will send angels god now sent the angels peter came out and they opened the door saw peter shot him back and kept praying that's what many of us do are we together no i can't find my wallet i'm a tighter what is this i'm a tighter i dropped my tight in koinonia oh god i'm a, I'm a tighter at least it's better than nothing but i'm teaching you restful confidence say restful confidence if you are to be honest you will know it's fear i notice the loudest prayer in koinonia is against the spirit of death and the calling of destiny helpers i have noticed it personally that every time i say everybody stand up and you know sometimes you can lead it seriously be serious i mean when we say go is like an arrow all kinds of where are your destiny helpers ah, where are they Praise the Lord. Can you get to a point where when you speak, you speak based on conviction? When you say, I shall not die, you are not helping yourself believe. An encounter has furnished a reality in your life and it's on the strength of that reality you say, I shall not die. How many of you prayed to sit down on your chair? How many how many of you prayed to sit down okay you need okay praise the lord are you hearing what i'm saying how many of you when you came through perception and understanding you knew that there are laws that were created by God to keep this chair. Who among you is sitting down now and say, Oh Lord, I really believe you. Ah, no, this chair, you can't disgrace me now. Now, does that mean you are not a believer for keeping quiet? That's how restful your life should be. You can sit down inside fire and you only talk when necessary. Because there is something you know. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please, I, I want you to believe what I'm teaching you. Otherwise, this series is a waste. I'm taking out time to pound on this because I want you to believe God. You step in and somebody looks at you and says, I'm your grandmother. Go and ask about the people I have killed. I vow that you will not see December this year. It's a vow. I vow that you will not see December this year. You now go back. Lord, is this how I'm going to go? What did I do? Who did I offend? Let me tell you what most believers will say. God forbid. Then later they will sleep and say, Kai. Kai. Now let me tell you. That woman herself is even afraid of you. She's but because she gave an attitude and said, I dare you. She left you with an attitude. You too, you claim to have the attitude. But there was no restful confidence after a while you say apostle um i don't know I don't mind i don't be it's not me but i'm just telling you so that you will pray for me it's still fear it's still fear the same way an intelligent student writes an exam he knows what he wrote and they'll just look and say do you know only four people passed the student may just feel an inkling of fear, but the student knows that even if it's one student that passed, I am the one. Now, he's not boasting out of nothing. He knows what he read. 
he understood it he cross-checked the question after the exam and he was absolutely satisfied it's called restful confidence the other person who does not really know what he did is now hoping that's why when he sees ah, finally have you seen the best student lord i'm grateful i give you all the praise but i expected it this is how your life must be that you know god sister you are 34 you are not going to marry and all of a sudden you start going and say talk mountain to mountain valley to valley everywhere you start running all around and you just fidget there are many of us the moment somebody speaks to you someone just holds your hand and says for sinner i had a vision in that vision i saw cats eating you up for sinner does not sleep for one week are you getting what i'm saying now i will tell you what the problem is the problem is not the vision the problem is not whether it's true or false the problem is you if i look at you now and say for sinner you're a man will you pray about it i'll tell you why it's not just because god told you you're a man there are too many things that have happened in your life to convince you beyond imagination you don't just believe you're a woman you don't just trust you're a woman you know you're a woman notice the progression i'm believing god i trust god i know my god i know him i know him god it doesn't look like him i know him when can you say you know him that's what moses knew he knew his ways though he slay me yet will i praise him because i know him i know him i'm trusting god to get to a point in my life where I don't just jack up my faith trying to believe God. 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 Oh Lord, I believe in you. Oh Lord, I... no, 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 no. At that point, you will move mountains. You will join these elders. Brothers and sisters, mountains will stand before you people will even pity you their eyes because they think you are dead at the end of it they will not see the mountain again and they'll see you shaking yourself that's how great people live in this life this ministry you have seen is here by faith by faith by faith by faith i've come to a point where i'm not trying to believe god i really trust him faith is based on the speaking of god trust is based on your experience with god you have had an experience with god there is a track record of his credibility so you can trust yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me he says thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies we need to begin to walk by faith there are too many things in our lives that attempt to challenge our trust in God but you must get to a point where you say from today I walk by faith and the first encounter is to make the Word of God real in your life look at me the greatest investment you can make in your life is not having an education the greatest investment you can make in your life is not just having good friends the greatest investment you can make in your life is to make your life saturated with the word of god where you take the word of god as a project you have given yourself a basis for true faith because there are mountains to cross i like that don Wen song don't we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever holy is the lord holy is the lord. let's take that part again though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. Listen, Koinonia, I speak to you. You are not the first to go through challenges. There are men on earth 
who have crossed this river they have crossed the river of barrenness they turn barrenness to triplets are we together there are men who turn being a pauper not affording 10 naira to giving billions to nations there are men of god who turn two members to nations you are not the first there are those who overrode the mockery of men it's time for you to leave the level you are in this life of pity oh god won't you show up for me no sir he will show up when you are ready though we are few you're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song that we'll be singing forever oh so God puts his word upon your life Femi you will be great he will never do any other thing until you do something with the word you can sit there forever and die a failure it does not mean he lied the word of God does not act on itself by the time you look at your life my father is not doing well my mother is not doing well I came from a village please listen I am one of 17 children I am even the second to the last born. I am 35 years old. I've not done anything meaningful. You look at all of this and God says, if you believe me, God never gave men instructions until he revealed himself to them. The first assignment was to reveal himself to Abraham, revealed himself to Moses. Then he now sent them. They, every time they wanted to disobey, they remembered him. They remembered him the same way somebody want to tell you look there's one there's somebody that I saw in WhatsApp I spoke with him and he said he's looking for a wife and the way you have been desperately looking for a husband or a wife I think I can do a range for you and he said no problem God works in many ways I believe but that is not faith it's unbelief are we together listen make up your mind today that you will never take any action in unbelief until you stay and believe god this is why people who rush through things in life suffer they rush to start business they rush to marry they rush to enter a relationship they rush to do this do you know why when challenges push you you will not just look at what you are looking at you have to look at god you have to go back and say lord i know you all you spoke you said koinonia will rise you said you will give us a voice i believe you many graduates are holding their certificates roaming around the streets in nigeria angry the same people can bring notes for you when they were in 200 level they said god told me i will be great fast forward many years they are now holding they were never believing in god they were believing in that certificate they were just hoping that god was the certificate now that they've held the certificate they are moving around and you are asking them where were your visions where were your dreams you said god gave you courage god told you you will never fail brothers and sisters what has god told you leave what he has told you and focus on him the one who spoke i'm reintroducing to you today a god who is dependable i'm reintroducing to you today a god who had parted the sea this bible is a chronicle of his ability a chronicle of his integrity so that you will believe him away with all those talk we have mocked god we have cursed god because of our challenges i know there are challenges I never said there would not be. That's why I read you Hebrews 11. But I want to see your reaction. Show me your reaction under fire. And I show you whether you know God or not. Show me your reaction when things are not happening. And I can tell you whether you know God. Though he slay me. Will I be honest if I say I do not know him? I know him. I know him. He is dependable. If I die today without a miracle, I still know him. That's what made the people in Hebrews 11. They knew him so much 
they rejected deliverance listen listen imagine for instance that God gives you two options in life just imagine and God says you will go through a season with me for six years and you will become so mighty or you will go through a season for one year you will start moving fast but you will not become as mighty as six years let me tell you what many of us will choose a bed in hand is what 20 in the bush oh god thank you for giving me this one year i can i can pay the price but there are those who know god and say lord even if it's 10 years let's go because one step in faith will give you 20 years worth of miracle one step in faith one step in faith have you not seen how god wiped the tears of people and changed the lives of people overnight men who trusted god koinonia i'm introducing to you a god you need to know before you start claiming to believe his word you must have an encounter with this god you must create the atmosphere for his word to be real in your life let it not just be talk 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 cheap talk talk no sir anything god cannot give me no man would claim to say he can give me anything god cannot give me that's why i can look at any man and say thank you for your open door but go with it god did not open that door and i will not go back to sleep and regret i believe god brothers and sisters look at me i have gone through mountains and valleys in my life make no mistakes about it don't you think i'm just talking to you from a standpoint of comfort i have gone through things that very few people can go through and survive i know that god is mighty by and large in life everything you trust will fail you and a time will come you will no longer hold on to things but a person pastors have called me man of god i've listened to your messages but nothing is working in my ministry and the first question i ask them is are you sure you are called and they say yes i said if you believe you are called did you hear what god told you they say yes i say stay there stay at the last instruction he gave you and die there there's a song that says i will be a good soldier he says i will die at my post if he does not shift a post let me die there i will survive the mockery i will survive the ridicule i don't have to be under pressure to explain things to people no it's not like this actually it's, it's, it's god that told me no. you will never believe him until you encounter him you will never believe him until you encounter him you will never believe him until you encounter him koinonia please hear me faith the foundation of faith is an encounter with god an experience that furnishes the reality of him there are real mountains you will face you will face all kinds of mountains even the most trusted people in your life cannot take his place a time will come you will have to stand alone and say lord jesus i trust you i trust you though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever Holy surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing we'll be forever singing forever Faithful is the Lord. 
Listen. The Lord. Listen. I want you to fall in love with your Bible tonight. Listen, please. Listen. Listen. Please listen to me. I know you have books in your library. Listen to me, please. I know you have books in your library. I know you have DVDs. I know you have CDs. But I bring you to a point tonight where you eat this word till something leaves it and enters your spirit. I have in my phone a compendium of the words of Jesus. Only the words of Jesus spoken. Only everything Jesus ever said in the Bible. Only it. I listen to it every time. I love the words of Jesus. I listen to it. Sometimes I let it run for hours as I sleep. And I have encounters. I wake up under certain intense dimensions. I know something happened. I don't need to know what happened. I know something happened. Are we together? I know that something happened to me. An encounter. I'm a very busy person. Just returned from a trip today. Tomorrow we're off for another one. You know, Eddie was driving me. We're coming from the bank and he asked me a question. He said, Apostle, do you ever rest? I may live a busy life, but not too busy for this. This is the most accurate picture, compendium of the dealings of God with men. I don't read, I read my Bible emotionally. I don't read my Bible intellectually. When I look at it, I see myself. If it be thou, bid me come. I, I, I replace Peter and I stand there. I look at all the challenges that are before me. There's a peace in my heart. In spite of all the darkness that surrounds me. And this peace that I know only comes alive every time i hear your voice there's a light in my soul in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this light in my soul only comes alive every time i hear your voice listen Brothers and sisters, I want you to hear me. If you do not come to a point of restful confidence through the word, you will shake like a leaf at life. At a point in time, you will feel like dying. That's what makes people commit suicide. They get to a point in their lives where they move left, there is no way out. They move right, they are pressed to the core. And they think the only way is to drink, to smoke, or get a gun and blow themselves this word can minister the life of God to you this is ordinary scripture but the moment you begin to read it believing that out of it will come the word of God I assure you you will see miracles in your life and ministry sister I'm prophesying to you it's not over I don't know who said it's over but you take this Bible and recreate your future you have been predicting it by wishful thinking now create it through the power of the word you have been predicting it just by hoping hope is important it make it not a shame but let me tell you the truth if you must walk in any reality in your life you are going to have to create it i believe the word of god i know whom i have believed i have not followed cunningly devised fables i believe him it's time for every word that proceeds from your mouth to be a communication of faith. Don't speak until you believe. We having the same spirit of faith. It's called the operation of faith. We having the same spirit, operation of faith. As it is written, I have believed and so I spoke. I did not speak to believe. I spoke because I have believed. You don't speak to believe. You have an encounter to believe. Then you speak because you have believed. This is Bible faith. Time will fill me of Jephthah and Barak. 
men who through faith koinonia please listen they built houses by faith some of us have come where god has brought us today it is by grace through faith by grace through faith by grace but through faith it is not just by grace through wishing by grace through crossing your legs and hoping that because it's by grace it will happen you will never see any result there are two prayer points we're going to pray now and we're done for this night next week i don't want you to miss it i'm going to be teaching you the dynamics of faith how faith really works we're going to look at this thing in depth how do i translate desires to manifestations rise up on your feet we will rise in your name Adonai you reign on high we will rise in your name Adonai you reign on high and I will rise in your name Adonai you reign on high let your first prayer point tonight be a prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, thank you for showing me what I've been missing. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, thank you for showing me tonight that faith is not just wishful thinking. Faith is not just mental asset. Faith is not just memory of scripture. Although that is important. Faith is not just Bible study for a historical advantage. Lord, I thank you. Shabra tarato sobrekete. Ela kaparata kato shodo bregade balada 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 balada. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I'd like you to cry and say, Father, an addiction for scripture, plant it in me. Listen, listen. There are some of us here as I'm speaking for one month for two months you have not you have not opened this Bible you have opened it in koinonia listen but to settle down some of us used to be really serious with studying the Bible you just give God 15 minutes just rush it no 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 listen the goal is not to read the Bible every day the goal is to be consistent life will not afford you there are very few people except those who use devotionals there are very few people that can really afford to read the bible every day five o'clock to six it's a worthy habit but not everybody will have that are we together there are many leaders who don't study the bible i'm a leader i know how hard it is to work with those routines i'm a leader i'm a man of god many men of god will lie to you it's not every morning that i get up i read my bible no that would be a big lie many people will lie to you no you can't do that you can't do that 5 30 we're out of this town to catch up with the flight there may not be time i may barely even have the time to sleep i may just get up and rush and take my bath but one thing i can tell you when the bible says when you see the bible put an emphasis the key is consistency the key is not religion you can develop a habit that will make you consistent like a devotional like creating a time morning in the afternoon or in the evening or any of them but brothers and sisters if you want to grow in faith you are going to have to embrace your bible and give god time so i'd like you to pray and say lord grace to give you time in my life lift your voice grace to give you time grace to give you time Grace to give you time not to rush around my life. That I will seek you with all my heart. I will search for you and I will find you. I will find you. 
with all my heart I will leave my hands to you and worship I will worship with all my heart I will search for you and I will find you I will find you with all my heart I will leave my voice to you in worship I will worship Lord, I give you time. This is my busy life. Do something upon my life. Let me be a student of the Bible. Let me give time. Knowing that my faith. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. Not a godfather, not a godmother. All I need is you, Lord. The fountain of favor, the fountain of wisdom. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. to talk about this but we are going to pray it all the same listen to me we are praying we are rounding up you cannot obey God until you know his will are you hearing me I will shift that to next week discerning the will of God but for now let me just tell you something there are two dimensions to the will of God there is his written will and there is his revealed will his written will is that which he has allowed to be written in scripture a communication of his desire it is it is not matured in the spirit to ask whether God wants you rich or God wants you alive there are scriptures that already show you it is his will Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the thoughts I think towards you said the Lord thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future so asking oh God do you want a good life for me it's not a wise prayer but there are certain dimensions of his will that must be revealed 
next week i'm going to teach you how to access the revealed will of god it is not written here that femi should be based in zaria it is not written that sam should be in london are we together it is not written here that a jimmy should marry hope it is not written here that eddie should be a protocol in koinonia but you will need let me tell you something one of the areas where people have marked time in their life they want to obey but the will the will the will i have studied this and i'm still studying it the ability to access the revealed will of god because if you act in disobedience it is still unbelief you have acted your action must be based on a knowledge of the will of god we're going to take off from there so i'd like you to pray one prayer with all your heart and say lord everywhere i'm still in confusion as to your will for my life accurate clarity revealed to me lift your voice and pray koinonia pray every gray area threatening my confidence every gray area threatening my confidence every gray area confusion hallelujah listen listen every time you turn in the day of battle it is because you are in doubt of God's presence and God's way are we together the moment you are certain if someone comes to there and says, Joshua Selman, Koinonia is not the will of God. I'm not even going to pray about it. My God. There is a depth of certainty. Do you have that kind of certainty for your life? If no, stop running. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are some of you by this message tonight, you should mark time a while. This rush is too fast. There are some of us by this teaching, just peg yourself and say the month of October is the month of discernment the month of clarification and the month of certainty tell yourself i'm not crossing october with these myriads of doubts in my life i am tired of believing god today it's like this is my husband but next week i'm in doubt again it's like this is my wife but next week i'm in doubt it's like god wants me to do this business but i'm in doubt it's like i i it's like i had it's like i had i had katsina i was even excited but now i've come back katsina we're back to sender it's like uh -uh, uh -uh. your faith will not be grounded that way open my ears to hear you and lord any confirmation it takes to make me know it is you give it to me lift your voice and pray these are simple but powerful prayer points any confirmation about your will Absolute clarity, absolute clarity. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I remember years ago, there are many people I see today who I remember 
when you would ask them when they were students what will you do, be doing with your life they say serving God to the ends of the earth they thought they were clear right now ask them what are you doing with your life so oh boy Kai. he said I thought I had you said hey, leave all that one we were children that's why now that we're adults let's face the reality let me tell you when a man's life is like that please hear me between now and next Friday you should be able am I going to be a man of God am I going to be a businessman am I a civil servant are we together this issue of allowing life to choose for you will shred your life into pieces there are people seated here right from praise and worship there are so many listening to me the first overflow and all the overflows around there are so many connecting uh, you know on our social media platforms and you're hearing my voice right now and the holy spirit is telling you the man of god is talking to you the first miracle that can happen to you tonight is the miracle of ending the mismanagement of your life by trying to run it your own way. Are we together? That you hand over your life. When you come to Jesus, you don't just come and accept him in your heart. You take your heart and say, Lord, I give you everything not i give you my spiritual life i hand over my entire life to you everything i've been through use it for your glory lord i offer my life to you everything that's true repentance that as you come here, you are not just coming because you are feeling guilty. You are coming here sincerely saying, I'm tired of mismanaging my life. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more than living my life the way I want. I must come under authority. And I know there are so many people inside and outside hearing my voice. Some of you have never made this decision to make Jesus Lord of your life you've made a decision to go to church you've made a decision to join a religion called Christianity but you have not made a true decision to surrender everything and there are people there's another category I'll call all by uh, at, at once so that we'll save time there are those who at one point you truly made a genuine decision but the cares of this life the challenges in your life just overwhelmed you and right now you know that as it is right now as it is right now you cannot say things are all right between you and god you've backslidden you've you've turned away but the bible says if my people who are called by my name it says shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then it says then we lie here from heaven and will forgive their sin and then will heal their land forgiveness will always follow healing are we together i'm going to make an altar call right now any of the overflows outside inside here very fast i'll count one to ten listen there are people the holy ghost is speaking to and you know that you need to make your ways right with jesus you're saying lord things are happening in my family i do not even know the name of what is going in my family the first key is to surrender your all to sacrifice everything before his throne and say lord i'm not just coming to receive healing i'm coming to start a new life it's called zoe god's very life not another kind the very life of god hallelujah praise the lord before i make the altar call i want us to all close our eyes and pray in one minute intercede for those who are about to come and say lord no power will stop them from coming no power will stop them from coming we believe in the salvation of souls this is not a cinema where we are watching football this is a place where god is changing lives and destinies pray as you are praying for many of you the lord is going to be speaking to you right now there are so many outside in all the overflows 
it's like you've been waiting for a man to call you and say return home he's calling you he's calling you hallelujah now i'm going to count one to ten wherever you are please i'd like us to begin to celebrate them outside inside don't wait for others you are returning to christ and you are making this decision for the first time leave your seat and make your way quickly one we'll count one to ten don't wait for anybody god bless you they are coming two please clear the way for them outside don't let no friends stop you jesus is calling you No, no, no. You are, doing, you are doing a very noble thing. Don't let any friend, please encourage them outside. If you came with anyone, don't stop them from coming out. God will punish you if you stop anybody from coming out because he's your friend. It's, it's, it's an entirely, um, it's a personal affair. God bless you. Keep coming. Koinonia, a sacrifice of your applause to motivate them and encourage them. Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Keep coming, Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. I believe in you. Hallelujah. The Lord is still speaking to me that there are people you need to make your ways right with God. In fact, the Lord is showing me at least three ladies. You've not prayed like for the last two months because you are asking what I have done. Will the Lord really, really open up himself to me? And the Lord is saying you should make your way to the front. Clear the way for them, please. Clear the way. I don't care whether you are a pastor, you are a prophet. Make your way to the front. This is serious business. I believe there are still people outside in the overflows the first the second overflow and across the road please make your way to the front we're going to wait for you one more minute we're going to wait for you we're going to wait for you please don't play games with god tonight this is your destiny he wants to bless you he says for i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord jeremiah 29 11. he says thoughts of peace thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. I believe in you. I believe in you. Let's all sing this song one more time and then we'll pray for them. Jesus, Son of God, I believe. hallelujah i sincerely want to appreciate us young and old we are all here to receive jesus christ look at me please if i if i give you a new phone you don't accept it as though you are embarrassed you accept it with gratitude salvation is greater than any other thing you will be receiving tonight are we together and so i want you to be very proud of what you are doing whether you are being restored or you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time. Just make sure you are not reciting a poem. Make sure this is from the depth of your heart. Are we together? Lift your right hand high to the heavens and say this after me. I'm just guiding you, but the most important thing is the sincerity of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that Jesus is the son of God I believe that he died for me I believe that he rose again for my justification tonight I make Jesus my Savior my Lord I hand over my life and my destiny to your care and I ask that you be my Lord, my God, my King, 
forever from today the hold of sin the hold of the flesh over my life comes to an end this is a new beginning in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted as I pray for you father you see these hands lifted they have made genuine sincere commitments I pray that the Spirit of God that is our seal of redemption will be a witness to this spiritual transaction and I pray in the name of Jesus that from tonight let there be a new beginning in the name of Jesus Christ let there be a new beginning for every one of us no going back to the world no going back to the flesh by the power that raised Christ from the dead in the name of Jesus Christ I pray amen and amen a big congratulations to all of you this is the best decision you would have made in your entire life hallelujah now I like you to follow okay this way we're going to follow um, the ushers as they lead you there'll be a group of people to have your names your details and we'll follow you up they'll be very brief so that you come back and join us um, please be very fast with them because we're about to get up to the ministrations right away god bless you thank you for this great decision let's honor them koinonia bless them bless them Let's honor them as they go. Please rise up on your feet. We are going to pray for a few minutes. Hallelujah. We are about to pray for a few minutes. And I want our hearts to be open. Let's participate in the prayer. Hallelujah. Listen. When we pray, hear me, when we pray, we authorize heaven to step into our lives. Are we together? This is a miracle service and I want us to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, please media help us. We're about to pray. We're about to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. He says, call unto me and I will answer. Call on to me and I will answer. He says, and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call on to me. You see, prayer is a sign of humility because it's an indication that there is so much I do not know and there is so much I cannot do. Are we together? Prayer is a sign of humility. When you call on God to step into your life, it is because you acknowledge that He is able. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I know you are able. Lift your voice. Come on, pray, pray, pray. We are praying, please. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, I believe you are able. That's why I'm here tonight. I believe you are able to heal that cancer, to heal that HIV. Lord, I believe that you are able to give me a new story. I acknowledge you, I recognize you as the mighty God. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God. The great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the mighty God. You are the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
in the name of Jesus shout it say in the name of Jesus tonight I declare that every force tying down my life tying down my destiny tying down my progress you come under arrest tonight lift your voice and begin to pray Oh come on, Koinoni, are you praying? Every force Every force Rakata barato soto pregere belere bosh. Embra kata lakate seketaba. Seke pras kabarata labadash. Oh, you come under arrest tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I set before you this day blessing and cursing, life and death. But he says, I advise you, choose life so that you and your family will live. I'd like you to say in the name of Jesus. I make a decision. Tonight, I make a choice. Tonight, that I must leave this place free. I'd like you to open your mouth and mention the challenges that brought you here. And say, I am determined. I make a decision. I make a decision. Shake it, take a rabba bakaratos. Rekete brekete le koto soto ba. I make a decision. I make a decision. I make a decision. Are you praying? Shaba rakata laba. Mam brakata lakata. I make a decision. I make a decision. Please pray. Make sure you are praying. I make a decision. I must walk out of here healed tonight. I must walk out of here changed tonight. Hallelujah. after me in the name of Jesus shout it in the name of Jesus every covenant orchestrated by darkness to keep me limited in life to keep my family limited in life tonight I declare that this is my night of victory Lift your voice and cry, cry, cry. Cry unto the God of your salvation. they must be broken they must be broken I contend I contend by faith I contend by faith hallelujah hallelujah the bible says and abraham was old and well stricken in age 
and God had blessed him in all things I like you to pray and say every area that is not working say it every area in my life that is not producing results to now you come under the influence of the anointing lift your voice and begin to pray your finances may not be working your spiritual life may be working Oh, you are praying your, to a new dimension of God. Your majesty, your majesty, your majesty, your majesty, your majesty, your majesty. hallelujah hallelujah listen to the instruction the lord is giving me please listen let's walk together guys please let's walk together hallelujah praise the lord we are going to shout three times listen hallelujah because what i see in the realm of the spirit is like i'm standing on top of this building and i'm seeing like a pot boiling but it's about to tilt that's what i'm saying and the Lord is telling me that at the third shout, we are going to shout once, shout two. By the third shout, listen, the first thing that will happen, by the time we take that third shout, there will be such an explosion of the power of God, a mighty deliverance anointing. And that's how we are going to start off tonight. Are we together? It's called a healer. It's a mystery. It's a mystery that crumbles walls. When they went round the walls of Jericho, they shouted. The instrumentalists, everybody together. Hallelujah. Just be stupid enough to obey this instruction. And watch the God of wonders do mighty things in your life. You are shouting pain away. You are shouting sickness away. You are shouting captivity away. Hallelujah. My goodness, I'm telling you, the power of God is so strong in this place. Mighty, 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 mighty. I'm going to count three when I count three listen I want you to shout from the depth of your heart hallelujah and then the second time we are going to shout listen as surely as the God of heaven lives by the third shout in the name of the Lord God whose I am and who has sent me the wonders that will happen in your life by this third shout is a mystery brothers and sisters how God operates are you ready one two three hallelujah hallelujah please all those under the anointing just bring them out but really it's from the third time are you ready for number two we're shouting powers out of men's destinies we're shouting thrones dominions that have tied down the lives of men 
Are you ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah. Now be sensitive. Oh, I feel it on me. Here it comes. That grace. That unction. That grace. That unction. By the third shout, hear me. Angels will begin to move in dramatic ways. There will be an eruption of the power of God inside and outside. Are you ready? I make a decree in the realm of the spirit and I pray according to the word of the Lord as we make this shout I command thrones I command dominions I command altars and everything tying the destinies of men to give way in the name of the Lord Jesus are you ready now one two three mighty things happening to men already I tell you it's like volcano that's what I see in the spirit falling on people falling on people you baby of the prophetic the mantle of the prophetic 21 people that's what I see 21 people right now oh God in the name of Jesus wherever they are at the count of three let that mantle fall on them 21 one two three take it take it take it new wine take it Prophetic mantle. Prophetic mantle. Prophetic mantle. I call it salt. I call it salt. I call it salt. Mantles. Twenty one people. Stepping into prophetic anointings by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I activate it. I activate it. I activate it. I stand on that is apostolic anointing. I activate it. the spirit the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit so many people having their hands tied with chains that's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit chains this
this is a spirit of limitation lift your hands everyone i want to take authority over this spirit wherever you are inside and outside i like you to get ready if you are in this category something will happen to you let the sword of the spirit part those chains open are you ready i command the chains be broken now be broken now be broken now be broken now broken now there's a family God is liberating a whole family they are here I'm seeing God touch them right now giving them miracles hallelujah lift your voice in one minute and say Lord speak to me speak to me send a word that will bring me hope Send a word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm hearing the name Memuna. We have to rush. I'm hearing the name Memuna. Is there someone with that name here? Memuna. That's what I'm hearing. Shabakoto Paratoya. Memuna. Outside. Who is that? Memuna, you are outside. Who is that? Come. Look at me. Where are you coming from? Huh? I'm looking at you. Listen, look at me. You just came from somewhere here. Huh? Is there a, a mic? I'm looking at you. And I'm seeing you enter transport. And you are coming from Abuja to come here. Where did you come from? From Abuja. From Abuja. That's where you are coming. Because I look in the realm of the spirit. And I'm seeing you in a car. And you came and I'm seeing you praying and asking God to visit you and visit your family. Is that why you are here? Yes. Your family. You were saying if only you come here, God will visit your family. And God is saying he's bringing a breakthrough to Memuna and her family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I break that curse over your family. By the power of the Holy Ghost, it lives forever. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Look at me. Please call the lady again. My dear, where is your mother? Uh, what's she doing? She's at home. Uh, She's a civil servant. She's a civil servant. We have to pray because the devil wants to put sickness. She's complaining of pains in her body. She went to the hospital. Uh, she may not have told you. She went to the hospital last week and they said she should be careful because she's having problems with her back yes. is that true yes. that's what the doctor said that she's having problem with her back yes. this is witchcraft it's ah. not just pain like that your mother cannot even watch for 10 minutes her yes. back will start paining yes. her yes. in the name of jesus christ we pray for mama right now wherever she is let there be a supernatural miracle for her in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ madam can i talk to you please Yes, that madam, that one with, um, yes, please. Make sure you are praying. God is touching people. We just want to be fast. I wish we had time. No, 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 you don't have to kneel down. Please stand up. Where are you coming from, madam? From Jigawa, Jigawa State. Jigawa State. Yes. I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit I'm seeing a woman who has gone through pain and she's crying and I'm wondering why are you going through all of this uh, some of them I may not be able to say it here but you were invited here I'm with my sister. that's what I'm my saying where is she I'm seeing two people where is the sister come come and stand Oh, 
hold on. I'm hearing the Lord speak to me and saying there are two other people. Yes. There are two other people again yes. that you came with aside from you. Where are they? Where are they? Two other people. Where are they? Please come and stand. I want to announce to you, all of you, that God will give you a testimony tonight that will surprise you. Please, I want you to believe. I want you to believe me. The things I see, I may not be able to tell you right now. Because um, one of you has a problem with your husband. I don't want to go into... Hold on. I, should I talk? Do you want me to talk? Calm down. Let me talk to you. You came out. Let me talk. Madam, please look at me. Your husband needs deliverance. You believe what I'm saying? You love God. You are a sincere woman. But your husband needs deliverance. Huh? Where is he? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a woman crying. A man coming to vomit. Huh? Like I might vomit from drunkenness. And then this thing is telling on you. Huh? Are you a Christian? You love the Lord. I'm seeing you praying for this woman. Yes. Huh? Yes. That's yes, why I asked her, how do I know you are wearing something? I'm seeing you praying for her. Yes, In fact, sir. even when you stood there, you are saying that God should locate this woman yes, and sir. bless her. Yes, I'm hearing sir. your prayers. The Lord is ministering it to me and he's saying you should bless her. And the Lord God of heaven is saying he's going to bless her and bless you too. Hold on. Let me talk to you. Will you believe what I tell you? Why am I seeing you in a wedding gown? Are you married? Yes, sir. I'm seeing you in a wedding gown. Listen to me very carefully. And I'm seeing two men standing. Hold on. I'm seeing one man and I'm seeing another man. Yes, and the man is saying he married before this one. Yes. He comes to you in a dream. Yes, is that true? Yes, sir. This man I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Tell me the truth. Now don't be embarrassed. Yes, this has affected your marriage. Stand up. It's time to deliver you. Because I'm seeing you get married and I'm seeing two men. Your real husband and another one in the realm of the spirit. He comes to you in a dream. But the Lord is saying I should set you free. Elohim, you reign. You reign. You reign. Elohim, you reign. You reign. You reign. The Lord is showing me a lady. You left the hospital this morning. Your mother is in the hospital. It's part of the reasons why you came here. Please, who is that? Your mother, you left her in the hospital. And you came here. Please, when you get that person, let me pray for her. Because God wants to do a miracle. I want to pray for you. The Bible says, what God has joined, let no man put asunder. God did not join you on any spirit entity. And he's going to deliver you. In the name of Jesus. Be free. Let her go. Now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Madam. Please look at me. Your husband needs deliverance. His own money finishes on friend and friends and beer. Is that true? Is that true? It's true. Because I'm seeing him not only drink but buying for his friends and they finish the entire money you are a very kind woman but the truth is he's not giving you even one naira you don't even get money from him but the lord is going to be changing things now let me tell you how it will change it will look as if it's getting worse but you watch and see what god is going to be doing you believe that yes i'm going to pray for you father in the name of jesus christ let there be a miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle there is a woman from Katsina there is a woman from Katsina a woman from Katsina that's what I'm seeing a woman you are outside you didn't cover your hair you are from Katsina where is that person is there someone like that please where is that person why are you clapping where's the person please come from Katsina 
Look at me. Stand up, stand up, madam. Stand up. Your time of breakthrough has come. Look at me. The Lord is saying I should quote a scripture for you. When the Lord again shall turn your captivity, he says you'll be like them that day. Madam, you have cried enough in this miracle service. The God of heaven is about to wipe your tears. Mary. Mary. Who is Mary? Mary. Mary. I know there are many Marys. Hold on, please. Hold on. Let me call the Mary. The Mary is in this row. Mary, you are seated here. No, 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 no. At the back, you are wearing a dark cloth. Right here. You didn't cover your head. The Mary is in... No, like I don't know if it's a dark cloth. Like it has flower. It's a gown. It's a gown. Straight down. Gown, not gown with skirt. Is there someone like that? Mary, this row. The angel of the Lord is there. Is it a gown or someone? I'm seeing something with flower. Is there someone like that? Please find out. Mary, I need to talk to that person. I need to talk to that person. You're the one? Okay. Well, come. I'll talk to you. Madam, where are you from? I'm from Akwaibo. You are from Akwaibo? I stayed in Katsina. And are you married? Yes. Where is your husband? He's in Katsina. I have to pray for you. God wants to give you breakthrough. My goodness, lift your hands. I'm telling you, I just saw like a wind and the Lord said they are angels. Watch what happens in the congregation right now. Angels, 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 angels bringing impartation to people. I just saw like a wind in the spirit. Angels. Cutting away things. That's what I'm seeing. Angels. Cutting away things from people. They are removing things in people's bodies. That's what I see. Like a, a slimy substance. Living people. This is breakthrough. Breakthrough. God is giving people breakthrough. Hallelujah. Ma, let me pray for you. What do you do, ma? Hallelujah. Hold on. I'm looking at this woman. Don't be afraid. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm looking at you. Where is Kasham? I'm looking at you, ma. And I'm seeing her name on your head. And I was wondering, and the Lord, no, 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 no. Hold on. Come. Come. I'm looking at this woman and, and I'm seeing the name of this lady. Kasham on her head and I thought your name is Kasham but the Lord told me it's not Kasham the, what she's practicing is what you are now what what are you doing I'm a nurse what are you doing I'm a nurse you're a nurse that's what I'm seeing in the spirit that's what God is telling me because I'm looking at you and I saw her name written on your head and the Lord said I should call her and make see this is not diabolic. Hosea chapter 12. It says, I have spoken to you by the prophet. I have multiplied visions. He said, I have spoken to you in similitudes. This is not jamboree. We have a lot of things to do. God is locating people and when he's doing it for one, he's doing it for many people. Time will not allow for everybody to be called, but I just want you to believe. Believe in what God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's, that's, the, that's the only reason why you are here. Ma, I want to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord promoting you and lifting you. You believe that? If God grants grace, you will return and testify. Hold my hands, ma. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the God of heaven promote you and lift you right now in the name of Jesus. Ma, I want to pray for you. Where are you from, please? I'm from Anambra, but I'm from Jigawa. I want to pray for you. What do you do? Nurse. I'm a nurse. You are a nurse too. Yes. I want to pray for you. The devil wants to put sickness in your body. And this is not a nice, this is not something I will even say. The devil wants to put it in your body, but will take authority over it right now. Please hold my hands, man. In the name of Jesus, Lord, he will fortify her. I, I command that spirit to leave you right now. Out! The devil wants to put sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ma, look at me. The pain is living and you are going free. You have cried. I have, I'm seeing a woman who has cried. But God is stepping in. Hold my hands. 
in the name of Jesus. Lord, the grace that makes things happen. May that grace bring this woman out of pain. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. Come, stand here. I want to pray. There's bad luck in your family. Huh? Serious bad luck. Where's your father? Quara State. Quara State. I'm seeing a man in Quara State just going around in circles, not even doing anything meaningful. We have to pray. It's one thing to move physically, but it's another thing for your life to move too. Huh? And I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus. Please be very serious with the Lord. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Emeka. Emeka. I'm hearing the name of someone. Emeka. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let there be a miracle for you. Let there be a miracle for you. In the name of Jesus. Emeka. The Lord is ministering to me. I'm hearing the name of someone. Emeka. The Lord is giving you a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Emeka, you are outside. I'm seeing two Emeka coming. i tell you, I see like a screen. One, you have beard. One, you are wearing white. Elohim, you reign. You reign. You reign. I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. Don't be, I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. The devil wants to destroy your life. We have to pray for you. Sir, look at me. What do you do? You are a student. I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus and the hand of God is upon your life. Huh? It's not just an ambition for business, but the anointing of God is in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sir, I need to pray for you. I need to pray for you and destroy something that wants to kill you. Huh? So it's just a simple prayer. I'll pray for you. Don't be afraid. I'm not, I'm, we're not prophesying doom. You get what I'm saying? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that thing to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, that devil of darkness, it leaves you right now. Sir, hold my hands. I pray that the anointing of the Spirit will come upon your life right now. Step into a new level of grace by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not by power, it's not by might. I bring an anointing to your life that takes you to a new dimension. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a lady who is going to shout under the anointing. Just carry her like that and bring her to me. There is a word. No, it's inside here, it's not outside. Right here, carry her like that and bring her. It's a message. Just carry her like that and bring her. this is what i see in the realm of the spirit as she's lying down like this that's what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit and i'm hearing ezekiel 2 verse 2 it says and the spirit entered me and set me upon my feet the lord is bringing not just deliverance to you and your family but the lord is bringing i'm hearing the word restoration and the lord is saying i should prophesy to you receive it in the name of jesus it comes upon you by the power of the holy spirit please bring this lady for me just just carry her carefully if she can please lift your voice and pray and say lord visit me in the name of the lord jesus christ I break every hold you have with her life in the name of Jesus I'm looking at a lady in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing a spirit wearing a crown and the Lord is saying he's removing that crown that's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit this is a lady who loves God but I see her connected to things that have to do with marine powers and I'm seeing the lady with a crown and the Lord is taking it in the name of Jesus Christ I command freedom right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I command freedom right now be free go let her go now by the blood of Jesus Christ hallelujah please lift your hands I want to pray before we pray for the sick 
There's something the Lord is showing me. Please, I'd like you to lift your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Lift your hands. The power of God is going to come on certain people. I'm seeing deliverance in families. This is not just you. You are standing for your loved ones. I'm seeing mighty deliverance is happening in families. And the Lord is saying, one more time, we should shout that name, Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. As we shout Jesus, I'd like you to shout all your heart. At the count of three. The moment you do that, I see deliverance coming to families. And what they could not do in many years will be done within one month. What they could not do in many years will be done within one month. In the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Right now. Deliverance. 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 Shakataba. Families. I command it inside and outside. Inside and outside. Deliverance. What could not be done in 10 years? In 10 years, it will be done in one month. What could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month. What could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it in the name of Jesus. Every door stopping me from entering the next level. Right now, I command that door broken. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Pray yourself to the next dimension. Doors are opening. Pray inside and outside. Doors are opening. Doors are opening. Doors are opening. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, many of you may not understand what is happening in the realm of the spirit, but you see, the presence of God is where change happens in the life of men. Just like this, you will walk out and you will see things happen in your life. Just like this. There are chains that tie men. There are chains that hold down destinies. There are chains. Please bring this lady for me. Yes, this lady. Just this very lady. Just bring her. I keep the chains falling. Hey, I keep the chains. I keep the chains. I keep the chains. I keep the chains. I give the chains, I give the chains. There is power in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is coming for you. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Hallelujah. Uh, Jimmy, the Lord is giving me a word. I saw an eagle flying, and the eagle came and entered you. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's restoring to you the spirit of prophecy. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. He's restoring to you. I saw an eagle fly, and it entered you. And the Lord is saying he's restoring the spirit of prophecy. 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 
Hallelujah. I'm looking in the spirit and I'm seeing people carry load and God is saying I should bring down that load. Lift your hands. Lord, where are they carrying loads that do not belong to them? Right now, at the count of three, let that load come off you. Right now, one, two, three. Right now, right now, right now. Anyone carrying any load, kapratakata, shakatatata. Every load, every load, every load, every load, every load, every load that is not of God, every load that is not of God, every load that is not of God must leave you, must leave you, must leave you, must leave you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we are going to be very fast. Hallelujah. I was walking and the Lord said I should go back. Praise the Lord. Please don't mind me. Just allow me to do what the Lord is saying. And the Lord is saying I should walk right here. Outside. Right and go outside. Please hear me. And the Lord is saying as I walk. For every road that I pass. If there is a spirit holding your destiny, it must leave you. Please believe me. Sheka Karababa. I lift my hands right now. Right now, as I'm passing, the anointing of the spirit is touching people, destroying yokes, destroying yokes, destroying yokes right now, destroying yokes from my left and my right, destroying yokes, any spirit tying down any man's destiny. Right now, right now, right now. Right now, 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 right now. Right now. Every spirit. Every spirit. Every spirit. Every spirit. Now listen to me. Those outside. Don't be afraid, it will not rain. But watch this. Lift your hands. I'm going to walk this way. And the power of the Holy Ghost, you are enduring this rain. As I walk through, any spirit tie your life must give way right now. Are you ready? Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. I release everybody from bondage. 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 Right now. I stretch my hands. I stretch my hands. I stretch my hands. Right now, I stretch my hands. I stand by an anointing. As I pass your robe, any devil tying you will let you go right now. As I pass your robe, as I pass your as I pass your robe, as I pass your robe, as I pass your robe, now, right now. responsible for your limitation you are enduring the rain you cannot go back the same I came out to join you <laughs> hallelujah please make sure you pray I'm moving around. We are going to pray for you. Please lift your hands. Make sure you are praying. There's no spirit that will stand. Hallelujah. As many who can come in, don't worry. Just push them in. I know it will be a bit stuffy, but push as many people everywhere and let's pray. We have to hurry up. Just push them as many. There are some who may not be able to do much, but then we are praying. We are praying. Say after me in the name of Jesus. 
say it again in the name of Jesus every power holding me say it again in the name of Jesus every power holding my breakthrough tonight your time is up go 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 lift your voice and pray pray every power every force hallelujah now hold on i know that there are so many people coming in just give them room to come in just make every adjustment not all may be able to come in but it's a sacrifice it's a sacrifice it's a sacrifice we want to pray for the sick now now please be careful so we don't have people marching on people hallelujah we are going to do two things at the same time all those who came trusting God for healing now is your time please walk with the protocol walk with the ushers I'm going to ask you to come out and stand here don't match the people in front while they are doing that ushers begin to pass your prayer request begin to pass your prayer request there are miracles in the name of Jesus there are breakthroughs in the name of Jesus there is healing in the name of Jesus to break every chain break every chain Break every chain. Power to break every chain. Break every chain. I sense a strong healing anointing. A strong healing anointing entering this building. Break every chain. 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 hallelujah now we're going to minister to the sick please hear me no matter what the situation is as you stand right here i want you to believe god for healing you've heard the testimonies of people you've seen the things that god is doing in this place don't make the place rowdy just be orderly as we pray for you just a touch and you return back we may not have the time to take testimonies hallelujah please say to me you will join me where's pastor jakes i'm glad to have them around and they'll make this work easy the anointed people as we pray for you i want you to believe god for healing the moment you are prayed for as you walk back to your seat do what you couldn't do before don't just sit down and hope you are healed the bible says they came to hear and to be healed they came to hear and to be healed everyone lift your hands in one minute and pray and say every sickness in my body is time for you to go every incurable disease go ahead and pray every incurable disease you are living hallelujah worship team you help us while we minister pastor Jakes me please we are going to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus I want you to believe in the God that heals in the name of Jesus thank you Heavenly Father make sure you are praying in tongues don't just be whiling away time drop your prayer request and be praying pray in the spirit and say Lord you are going to visit me
to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, this I consider these sessions to be the most powerful. I know that you have to be a man of the spirit to understand all these things, the word of knowledge, ministering to the sick is very important but sincerely there is only so much are we together there's only so much there are thousands of people here and there is only so much you can see this represents the prayer request of so many people and there are so many others um, online and this is when we get to give God chance to reveal himself as a God of wonders hallelujah our time is spent but I want you to make sure that you participate we're going to pray on this right now and then afterwards um, I'm going to prophesy over our lives then we'll take a few announcements and we'll be done I want you to maximize the night so that you don't go back and return the same hallelujah before I pray I, I want if you can rise please rise those on, under the anointing that's all right and then mothers with children that's all right but the rest of us please let's rise and take this very seriously we're going to be praying right now when pastor jakes and Ejimi are done they can come and join us we'll pray pastor godwin where are you please can you come and join us um we're going to pray i'd like you to stretch your hands here and in one minute pray like your life depends on it and say the same way I have dropped this that's how I've dropped every challenge in my life I like you to pray please pray koinonia open your mouth inside outside online please join us we are going to lay our hands prophetically on this request as we lay our hands on them we are releasing the power of God to every home to every territory in the name of the Lord Jesus make sure you pray from the depth of your heart Father, we agree with you. We agree with you. All kinds of miracles. Impossible situations. Make sure you are praying. There is a God that answers prayers. Let fire fall on this request to God. Shakata prakata Pray, prophesy. We are speaking over this request. Wipe the tears of people, oh God. Visit individuals. Visit families. Strange miracles. Strange miracles. in the second time.
it is done, says the Spirit of God. It is done. Oh, glory be to God. Go ahead and rejoice and give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Please lift your hands and receive the prophecy. This is where God is going to be changing lives. Hallelujah. Your destiny can change overnight because one word was received. Prophecy does not only reveal, it creates. This is where everybody gets to participate in the service. Take it higher, guys. Inside, outside. This is where I want you to believe. You will rise in his name Adonai you reign in you will rise in your name Adonai you reign you will rise Hallelujah. Three weeks ago, I had a very serious encounter with God. And the Lord told me something. He said, I have put my word in your mouth. As you speak it, I will make it happen. That's what the Lord told me. Please, I want you to believe it. Oh, blessed is she that believes. Don't sit down and doubt and waste your time. There is a spiritual dimension to life. It's not just, I have taught you principles. Believe me when I tell you there is a spiritual dimension. Gates and doors over the lives and the destinies of men. I pray every gate that must be opened right now I speak to you Efata be open now be open now be open now be open now Open now. Be open now. That chain tying any man's destiny, tying the speed of your progress. You are moving, but you're not making impact. Right now, I release upon you an auction for speed. An auction, take it. An auction for speed. An auction for speed. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord, please help them. The hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He gathered his loins and ran on barefoot. He overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I don't know what you have done from January to now, but I prophesy from now till the end of June. Do what you have not done in five years. Shake it, 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 it. Do what you have not done in five years. Do what you have not done in five years. Hallelujah. Jacob dug a well and they covered it. They dug another one. They covered it. They dug the third one and they left it and they called it Rehoboth. They said, God has given us our space. Where you have been begging for relevance, it's like there is no place for you in life. It's like there is no place. I stand under this apostolic and prophetic mantle. Take your place in life. Take your place in destiny. Take your place in ministry. Take your place in destiny. Take your place in ministry.
ay, 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 ay. whatever has covered your glory whatever has covered your glory I stand tonight I invoke the powers of the heavens and I command let your glory be released now be released now be released now anyone here called jobless between now and the next two months I don't care what is the reason but I pray as surely as the God of heaven lives we give you a job here now we give you a job here now we give you a job here now it says to appoint unto them that morning Zion listen there are some of us you are making progress but no help in your life you fight for everything by yourself you pay for everything by yourself when you are in trouble there's nobody to speak for you at the gates where are your helpers who stopped them from entering your life who said it must be this hard i go down on my knees i call your helpers by prophecy in the name of jesus from the north to the south to the east to the west from the north to the south to the east to the west from the north to the south to the east to the west receive of their ministry listen let me tell you there is nothing more tragic as having no helper no man can stand alone you need voices to speak to you at the gates of destiny you need men to endorse you and say help him you can't have to explain yourself to everybody who is speaking for you i pray again whoever must appear in your life from now till june business help us financial help us marital help us career help us i call you for i call you for hallelujah listen lift your hands there are some of you your dreams and visions used to be opportunities for intense revelation where god will show you secrets it made your life easy till something shot you from visions and dreams i pray every dead dream life every dead manifestation of visions like a mantle receive restoration now restoration of dreams prophetic dreams visions prophetic vision hallelujah Please stretch your hands towards me please stretch your hands towards me the hands of a man represent your responsibility represents your wisdom represents your agency for bread I pray for you whatever has mocked the creativity of your hands so that your potentials are underutilized Isaiah 48 verse 17 I am the Lord that teaches thy hands to profit I pray the grace that makes your hand productive take it now take it now take it now take it now the grace that makes your hand multiply take it now everything called barren in your destiny physical barrenness spiritual barrenness academic barrenness career barrenness right now I cause the spirit of barrenness from its root and I command be fruitful be fruitful Fruitful. 
Hallelujah. Lift your hands. In the next one minute, I want us to pray because everyone will receive something. Listen, listen. What we're all receiving is an upgrade of grace. Listen. He said, grace be multiplied. Grace and peace be multiplied. The grace upon a man's life can multiply, should multiply, must multiply. There are three things that happen to you when God lifts you. One, he multiplies your grace. Two, he adds to your responsibility. Three, he increases your territory of influence, both spiritually and physically. I pray for you. Lift your hands. Some of us, you have not backslidden, but you have not risen beyond certain levels. You have stayed there at a level. Everything that is alive grows. Please, I want you to receive. I told you this meeting will have impartations. The impartation is not falling on the ground and rolling. Impartation is receiving something tangible in your spirit. Hallelujah. Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. He said to the end that he be established. I pray for you. Lift your hands. Every grace that is dormant in your life. Every grace that is useful but it has stayed at a level and is made no matter how you try to rise it stands there in the name of Jesus by the privilege of the apostolic office I pray for you may that grace be upgraded now receive it receive it take it an upgrade of favor an upgrade of wisdom an upgrade of power fire power fire fire prayer fire what fire prayer fire what fire an upgrade of supernatural wisdom an upgrade of access access to men of influence I pray for you listen what your current level of grace could not bring you into I empower you to go back and conquer that realm oh let me repeat what I'm saying there are levels in life and there are graces that are like keys you can get to a level and be stuck there no matter what kind of deliverance you can stay there because graces are like flights they can take you beyond certain levels some of us just need a little upgrade to overcome the obstacles you have tried prayer has brought you so far I pray for you whatever dimension must be added so that you can fly like the eagle that you are receive that dimension now receive that dimension now receive that dimension now hallelujah the bible says and you shall be called with a new name which the mouth of the lord shall speak it says you shall be called hefziba and Pula, a well desired land i pray for you everything that makes people run away from you they plan to help you but when they come they change their mind they plan to bless you but when they see you they consider what they are about to sow there is a spirit that cut short breakthroughs I pray for you in the name of Jesus I pray the blessing that was prophesied he said to Jacob the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed that aura that attracts favor receive it right now receive it right now whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise may that prayer be answered let me say it again whoever vowed and said it is through his dead body you will rise I said may that prayer be answered listen 
the bible says in five things the lord will deliver you he said yes six he will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men it was a revelation that was given Job that men stay and use their tongues to trap the destinies of men I pray for you whoever has used his tongue like a net to trap your life I release you right now I release you right now I release you right now hallelujah the kind of finances your hands has not touched I pray for you between now and the end of this month may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes anyone here marked for death that death is eyeing you waiting for the day you will get on the road waiting for the day a bike will come close to you to kill you and take your life i pray for you in the name of jesus we forbid the earth from receiving your body we forbid the earth from receiving your body there are five elements i'm rounding up that are the conduits through which the supernatural finds expression on earth five elements all through scripture the supernatural cannot manifest on earth without the instrumentality of these five elements number one is light god is light the entrance of thy word give it light let there be light number two water the fish and the birds of the air in genesis came out of water water represents abundance number three fire hallelujah it's a mysterious instrument not threatened by any other element yet refines every other number four wind the mystery of sound the mystery that takes sounds and realities he said i prophesied as i was commanded and there was a sound that sound came back in acts chapter 2 a sound hallelujah and the last element is the earth the prophet said oh earth hear ye the word of the lord he said for from dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return hear me i want to pray just one deep mystery for you the earth is a universal point of contact every man makes contact with it for you to be alive you must make contact with the earth your feet must touch the ground your helper's feet is touching this ground you are touching. No, 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 no. It's not amen. It's a mystery. The office where you are to be employed is on this ground. It's not in the air. Hear me, please. The bank that holds the favor you are looking for has contact with this earth. And the prophet said, O oh, earth, you are a living thing. You are not just stones. Hallelujah. Are we together? Hmm. It says they will not be able to oppress you because you have made a covenant with the stones. I pray for you. Whoever wants to disfavor you, just like the stars fought for Deborah, may the earth fight for you. May the earth fight for you. Quarter to shame. May a mystery manifest that you don't understand to bail you out. Listen, when men say, let's see what will become of him. I pray a mystery, my goodness, another way. May God bring another mystery and deliver you in the name of Jesus. The heat and the turmoil in Nigeria. We love our nation. We pray for them. And we pray sincerely out of a sense of nationhood. But I pray for you. The mystery of exemption that can exempt a man. It says for when men say there is a casting down. For you, you will say there is a lifting up. I prophesy a lifting up. Regardless of the recession, this is still your year of multiplied grace. And grace. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give God thanks.
thank him sincerely. Lord, we thank you for your word. Listen, I want you to go back realizing what happened to you. Don't be like the man who looks at himself at the mirror and leaves and forgets. These prophecies have come upon you like a mantle. You enforce them in the place of... Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.